Welcome to Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Today we'll be covering ArcGIS Pro Hydrology Part 1 Fill, Direction and Accumulation. In this video, I will discuss three tools from the Hydrology Toolbox Fill, Flow Direction and Flow Accumulation. The outputs from these tools will help us create a watershed in future. A watershed is an upslope area that contributes water flow as concentrated drainage. However, first we need to learn these different tools and their functionality. In this exercise, we are going to use this DEM data. We will start with the field tool. Sinks and peaks are often errors in the data. Sinks should be filled to ensure proper delineation of streams. The field tool iterates until all sinks within the specified Z limit are filled. As sinks are filled, others can be created at the boundaries of the field areas, which are then removed in the next iteration. The Z limit inside the tool indicates the maximum depth of the sinks to be filled up. We will go with the default value, which means all sinks, regardless of their depth, will be filled up. This is our result. Next, we will discuss the flow direction tool. We will be using this output of field tool to run this flow direction tool. This tool determines the direction of flow from every cell in the raster. Inside the tool, there is an optional output here called drop raster. The drop raster returns the ratio of the maximum change in elevation from each cell along the direction of flow to the path length between centers of cells. It is expressed in percentages. In this exercise, we don't need this. Under flow direction type, there are three options, D8, MFD, and DINF. We will go with the D8. There are eight valid output directions relating to the eight adjacent cells into which flow could travel. This is the default method. The other options multiple flow direction or MFD assigns multiple flow directions towards all downslope neighbors and finally DINF or D infinity assigns the steepest slope using the triangular facet. And here is the output. This output could be difficult to comprehend at a first glance, but you can use this matrix to figure out the meaning of these numbers. For example, Number 2, in our case the light green color, indicates a southeastern flow direction. Number 64, this red color which we can see right here, indicates a northern flow direction. Next tool that we are going to discuss is flow accumulation. It calculates accumulated flow as the accumulated weight of all cells flowing into each downslope cell in the output raster. If no weight raster is provided, a weight of 1 is by default applied to each cell. And the value of cells in the output raster is the number of cells that flow into each cell. Cells with a high flow accumulation are areas of concentrated flow and may be used to identify stream channels. Cells with a flow accumulation of 0 a local topographic highs and may be used to identify regions. We will use the flow direction as the input data and as we are not going to use any input weight raster here, a value of 1 will be assigned. We will keep the output data type float and we will again go with this D8 method for the flow accumulation calculation. This is our output. The streams are actually highlighted with white dots and to see them properly, we need to really zoom in. Now you can see the stream right here, where we have the highest flow accumulation. This output could be very useful for identifying stream networks or creating watershed, which we will be discussing in a future video. To recap, we discussed three different tools from the hydrology toolbox fill flow direction and flow accumulation i think this is a great stopping point this has been tessel bytes where we serve you gis in small bytes
Thank you for watching and please be sure to visit us at www.desolations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.